Hi there, my name is Nunur Bill and today I will talk about one of the most wonderful cathedrals in the world. I'm not talking about the real one, but about the Sagrada board game. So, in Sagrada board game, your help is needed to build uh, the stained glass windows of the cathedral. Remember, in this video I won't be talking about the rules to play the game, I will clarify some questions that might appear after the, your first couple of games. I also have to say that this video only refers to the base game without uh, any expansions. So if you have questions about the tools or the objective cards or even about the solo mode rules, this video is for you. Of course in the end I will leave you the rules that sometimes are overlooked. So let's put the game on the table and see those rules. Warning to the crew, Warning. my copy of the game Warning. is in Portuguese. Just before starting, there's one thing that has to be said. Any, but any tool card in the base game allows you to ignore the adjacency rule. You may never place a dice with the same number or the same color orthogonally adjacent to another dice with the same color or the same number. That being said, I'm ready to start. So, let's start with the tools. Let's start with the tool number two. The Eglomize brush lets you move a dice ignoring the color display on the window. Let's see examples of this tool. In this example, you can move your dice to another space ignoring the color on the window. But never placing two dices with the same color orthogonally adjacent. Example number two. When you perform the action of this tool, you can create two groups. The action applies to the dice that you choose and not to the others. The others were placed by the rules. The tool number four, the Latkin, lets you move exactly two dices. But remember, you have to follow all the placement rules. Let's see some examples. In my first turn, I take one dice and place it in my window, and my second turn, I do the same. One dice in my window. But I want to use the, the Lat King tool, so I pay the respective amount of favorite tokens. Remember that you will have to move one dice each time, taking one and place it, and taking the second one and place it. In those movements, you always have to respect the placement rules. That being said, you can change one dice for the other. As with the tool number two, after using this tool, you can break um, your dice group into two groups. A situation like this cannot happen uh, in a normal way. By using the flex brush, the tool number six, you can choose a dice and re-roll it. But remember, you have to use it, even if it's not an ideal situation for you. But of course, if after the re-roll, it is, it is impossible to place the dice in your window, you can put it on the round track. Now the grinding stone, the tool number 10, it's very simple to use. First you choose a dice and pay the respective tokens, favor tokens to use this tool that uh, allows you to use the opposite side of that dice. Remember, you have to use this action on that dice before placing it on the window. Now the flux remover, the tool number 11. This tool allows you to choose one dice from the draft pool and throw it again into the bag and take another dice, choosing the face you want to use and you can place the dice on your window or in the draft pool. Quite good, isn't it? Now the questions about the objective cards. This public objective gives you victory points for each pair at the end. Remember that one pair is, for example, one six and one five, and each number only counts for one pair. I will show some examples. I want to score this objective in this window. There are five dices with the number five and four dices with the number six. 
So I have four pairs, which will give me eight points. Here in this example, I have three dice with the number three and two dice with the number four. I only get uh, two pairs. The public color diagonals objective gives you points equal to the number of dice that you have in a same color diagonal. I will show some examples. Here in my window I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 dice. I will receive 14 points. The number of dice in the bag is a hot topic inside the community. Uh, although the publisher states that we can play with all dice uh, no matter the number of players, some gamers say that it changes the probabilities. In the 5-6 player expansion, the publisher finally gives us different setups for different players. Although the publisher never said how many dice we have to use when we are trying to uh, play in the solo mode, um, I'll give you here the number 40 because it's the number that the, the designer said in a forum. That being said, it's up to you the number of dice you want to use in your games. This game has a solo mode and here are some frequent asked questions about it. It seems that there are some versions of the rulebook, but the designer suggests that you take two private objectives during the setup, and at the end you will choose only one to score. Never forget that at the end of the game you will lose three points for each open space in your window. The running players, the tool number 8, is not very useful in a solo mode. The benefit is to use a red dice on it and steal points from the AI opponent. So if you want, you can discard it and play without it. When you want to use the glazing hammer, the tool number 7, you have to do um, this sequence. First, in your first turn, you take one dice and put it in your window. On your second turn, you choose one blue dice, place it on the card, and the card lets you uh, re-roll the dice on the draft pool. After that, you choose another dice and place it on your window, and the other one goes to the round track. You can place a dice on a tool that you cannot use only with the purpose to deny points from your AI opponent. You have to use a dice only in the tools that you can use its benefits. At last, remember that you always have the option to not to place a dice. And now the rules you can't forget to play Sagrada in a better way. It's forbidden to intentionally break the placement rules only to stop another player to take that dice. The tools number two and three uh, allows you to move uh, dices in your window, ignoring the color or a number. But keep in mind, you cannot break a placing rule. You already know that your first dice has to be placed on the edge of the, your window, but if you will use a tool on your second turn and move that dice into the middle of your window, your second dice has to be placed adjacent to that one. You can't choose a dice that you can place on your window. So if there aren't any dice that you can use, you will have to pass. Or in the solo mode, you can spend a dice on a tool. If you find an error in your window, you have to immediately take the dice or the dices that are misplaced. In your turn, you can take a dice and or uh, use a tool in the order that you want. If you are playing with a group with uh, experienced players, you can uh, give first during the setup the private objective cards and then the Windows cards. If not, you can give the Windows cards first. You can only use one tool per turn, but you have always to use its benefit on that turn. Remember, in a round you have two turns, so you can use two tools. All this information that I gave you, you can now build the most beautiful stained glass windows. And if you like the content of this video, subscribe to the channel and let me know that I'm on the right track. So goodbye and have a nice time playing games.